Hello everyone, welcome to a special episode of What Do You Call It Podcast. Now I know you have heard me say it before, but this is truly a special episode. The reason being, it's not the first, it's not the second, it's not even the 10th or the 50th episode, it's the 100th fucking episode of What Do You Call It Podcast. Uh, Just before I introduce today's lucky guest, uh, I'd like to thank everyone that's helped me. Uh, with the podcast so far everyone that's appeared on the podcast thank you for your time and coming on the show um, and most importantly I want to thank the listeners and the viewers uh, for helping me reach this milestone it is much appreciated so I had to get all the you know all the sappy crap out of the way so you know gotta be nice but no I genuinely mean it thank you it means a lot so um, today's guest he brings pain and suffering to anyone that steps foot in the ring with him behold the power of disciple Disciple, how you doing today, mate? You all good? I'm very well, thank you. Very well, thank you. How are you? Well, not too bad, mate. Not too bad. Hay fever's been a bit of a fucker, to be honest. But besides that, in general, I'm okay. I can't really complain, you know. Uh, weekend's yeah. around the corner as we're filming this. This actually should be coming out this evening. So there's okay. that as well. So people can look forward to that, which is all good. Before I talk about you becoming the disciple, and I mentioned it just mm. before recording, I had to, you know, touch on it i want to speak to you quickly about your appearance on mtv's love squad now i'm not yeah. going to pretend that uh, i'm a hardcore fan but i'm aware that yeah it's a popular dating show i'm actually genuinely like, i've never seen it but i know you're off the show so i think it'll be interesting for the listeners and the viewers to hear how okay. you actually ended up on that show um <clears throat> well first of all before we get into anything i just want to say congratulations on on 100 shows and uh, thank you very much for having me on. Really, really appreciate it. It's no problem, uh, great to be here. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, so <laughs> Love Squad. It was kind of, um, I've, I've done a lot of, little bit of film and TV stuff before. Um, so I know a couple of uh, producers and I've got them on social media and stuff. Um, and then one producer messaged me originally uh, about Naked Attraction. Now, I'm absolutely not going to be doing that. I'm not going to get my my small willy out on TV and uh, and embarrass myself. Um, so I, I very quickly declined that. Um, but then she sent me another message and saying, well, if you don't want to do that, which is understandable, we've got another dating show, which we're going to put forward for, for a big channel. Are you interested? And I was like, well, as long as I'm not getting any, uh, any of me tackle out, I'll, uh, I'll sign up for it. And to be fair, I didn't really... She didn't give too much away. It was just kind of this new dating show that we're we're gonna gonna try for MTV. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, uh, have you got a few friends that you would potentially want to put as your squad? Um, so I nominated a few people to be um, in my squad because at the time they didn't really know if I was going to be having my squad or if I was going to be one of the dates that the the, the person would be picking. Um, so I, I went through like a bit of an old process, um, didn't hear anything for a couple of months and I thought, well, probably not, not heard anything. That was it. And then one day out of the blue, I got a call saying, um, the producers of the show, uh, really liked me and wanted me to go on and be one of the six lucky guys, uh, that could be up for a, for a date. Um, and I thought, you know what? No, I'm no foul. I thought I'll go for it. And, uh, so we went down to Manchester, I believe is it, um, is it Dirty Martini in Manchester? So quite a fancy, fancy uh, bar. Um, and they basically just said to us, all your drinks all night are free. Just help yourself. Um, just have fun with it. So there were six guys that got shortlisted for this. So the way it works is that one unlucky in love person gets to have a squad with them. Um, and then they can choose out of these six guys. So they get to th- choose three. So... The one person that's looking for love gets to choose someone. The presenter gets to choose someone, which was, uh, I think it was Charlotte Dawson, her name was. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the squad picks someone who they feel would be a good fit for the person. Now, there was a couple of guys there. And we, we the, the six guys met up beforehand uh, in the bar. And the producers like, well, you're the, the six that, uh, you know, could be picked. Um and I thought, you know what, there's a couple of good looking guys here. Like, I'm not going to get picked at all. So I'm just going to get drunk. Uh, and that pretty much was, was my plan, just to 
you know, enjoy the night out in Manchester, free night out in Manchester. They Damn paid right. for my hotel. And then, uh, so I, st- I started very early. Um, and obviously we're filming and stuff. It takes a long time to get everything set up. And yeah. Uh, so I, I think we started drinking about three o'clock in the afternoon. And we didn't go into the actual filming bar uh, until about six, seven o'clock. Uh, and by this point, I would, was thinking double JD honeys. And, you know, <laughs> I was having a good time. And uh, so, yes, we were around this table just sort of laughing and we, we, we saw the girl and and I was like, yeah, I'm not going to get picked, have a laugh. And then, uh, then the squad came over uh, and started talking to me and, you know, uh, they asked me a few questions and stuff. And then next thing I know, I've got the presenter, Charlotte Dawson, next to me with a big camera in my face saying, you've been picked by the squad. And um, if you do get to see it, if you do get to see the episode... Um, I need to find this now. So basically, you're on will... national television, you're pretty now smashed you as well. Story, <laughs> yeah, so now that you know the story, um, whilst I was having the conversation with, with the, the girl and when I got mm. picked, I was very drunk. Um, and then similar to... Similar to first dates, after the after the date, you know, the camera will have a conversation with with the person. Um, and I, like I say, I was pretty drunk at that point. And then uh, there was like a, we had to film these little vignette bits where we were like doing poses and stuff. Yeah. And uh, there was one, and I don't know why they put it in the in the final show, but there was one when basically the camera guy said to me, just do a few poses and stuff. And I was like, well, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, and then they put that in the in the in the show and i look like an absolute idiot um, <laughs> i need to find this <laughs> so yeah so um and then yeah so we, we had a date and then um the, the girl would pick out of the three guys she picked the the hot australian guy obviously um and then, yeah but like i say it was a it was a good good free night out for me yeah uh, i was gonna say man good exposure free night yeah free absolutely, food, hotel yeah. sorted mate that's and quality. that's the thing uh, and that's the thing, I think within wrestling as well, um, I think you want to try and get, you know, get as much exposure as you mm. can. And for me, doing stuff like that, you know, it's, uh, although it might be cringy, it's, mm. it's good to get out and, you know. There was a certain wrestler, more. I won't mention the name, but they actually went on Take Me Out and then they caught, kind of used that fame onto like the independent scene in the UK. And yeah. It did help them. Um, yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. good exposure for yourself. I mean, just before we get to wrestling, now I'm quite interested. What else have you done sort of like media related? Uh, so I've done um, a couple of Netflix shows. Um, just it's literally just background stuff, really. Yeah. So I've done Free Rain, which is like a kids program with the horse horses. Um, I was on. Uh, there was one just recently on Netflix that came out with um, Richard. Uh, I don't know what it's Richard Armitage. He, he was Thorin in in uh, in the Hobbit. Um, I think it's Stay Close. I believe it's Stay Close. Uh, and again, that one was a was a pretty easy day. So I had to go to Liverpool, and it was. Uh, Did you get free booze there as well? <laughs> uh, unfortunately, not. No. So that one, it was a uh, it was basically a strip club scene, and um, so the, the the director was like, "I should need you to be a strip club hunter. You're sitting in a club, you're just watching a girl dance." It's like, cool, yeah, can do that. And then, um, so when we go down on to, into the bar. Um, See, with, with this kind of stuff, like I say, you want to try and get a bit of exposure. So mm. I look at where the cameras are and where they're sort of focusing. So when the like the assistant directors and stuff are trying to move people, I'm like, oh, I'm sitting on that, that end chair there if you want. They're like, yeah, cool, go over that. Because I knew that it was like within shot. Um, so yeah, so I'm in, in I'm in one of the episodes, I think it's episode three, um, and you can just see me smoking a, a pretend, pretend fag, not real fag, um, and then uh, drinking some non-alcoholic beer. Uh, watching the girl dance in front of me, so yeah, you did a jackpot with some of your filmography so <laughs> far. <laughs> yeah, and then um, another one that uh, I've done. Uh, you've had, uh, I believe, Lance Rivera on a couple of yep. times. Yeah, so uh, we actually did um, the Tolkien film. I don't know if you've seen it. Doesn't make based, uh, based on Tolkien. Obviously, he created Lord of the Rings, so it was essentially a, a biopic of him and how he mm-hmm. came about. Uh, the Lord of the Rings. So we were World War One soldiers. So we did. Uh, I think it was like a week of, um, um, like a week of training, like a, a fully intense, like uh, combat training and stuff. And then we did two, two and a half weeks filming in um, in December. So it was freezing, freezing cold um, in this uh, field in Altrincham. So they built a big set of, um, you know, like the trenches and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, so yeah, so it was, it was freezing cold, it was muddy, it was wet, it was horrible. Um, it kind of gave us a bit of an appreciation of obviously what the soldiers went through. Um, obviously, the, the benefit we had is that we could go back at the end of the day and go get warm yeah. and stuff. Um, but in a way, it was it was nice because, like I say, we had the appreciation of what the soldiers actually went through. We only went through, you know, very um, minute uh, experience of you know what they went through and stuff. But that was a good experience, and we worked with the, uh, the stunt team on that. Obviously, with our wrestling background, we were picked out as sort of people that could work with the stunt team, mm. um, and that was good fun as well. Yeah, really good fun. That's pretty cool, man. I didn't realise you could yeah. actually sort of take something with you as well, not just film experience, but, you know, just sort of what the soldiers went through as well, like just to have that, you know, in your back pocket as well. That's that's pretty cool, man. I will ask yeah, you about really Lance, good, by the yeah. way. There's some things I want to ask you about him because, yeah, he's... I like him. I like him, but let's say he's a very confident uh, confident guy. So, but no, he's cool. Yeah. Uh, back to the wrestling, how I know you. And I think yeah. most of us will want to hear about your wrestling career. What was your first wrestling-related memory? Um, it was, I was, well, I was very young. I remember watching, um, WrestleMania, mm-hmm. uh, Hulk Hogan was a, was a big, big fan of mine. Um, my, my granddad used to, to wrestle as well back in, in Portsmouth, <coughs> excuse me, where I'm, um, so he used to, to wrestle with like, uh, Pat Roach and Skull Murphy and all those kind of guys. Um, so yeah, so I sort of got into wrestling through like, WWF and stuff and then he told me that he was a wrestler which I thought was was, was brilliant um, and then I oh, just nice. became a massive fan of it uh, from then uh, I think it must have been about four or five and I wanted to look like Hulk Hogan so I grew long ginger hair which looking back now was a, a terrible decision I'm, and I'm glad I, I shaved it off um, I bet they had fun of you in the yeah, playground for that <laughs> yeah <laughs> Uh, yeah, obviously a, a ginger person gets uh, enough stick as it is, but let alone with uh, with, with long hair. Um, and then obviously, yeah, I suppose someone of my age, uh, a big a big uh, wrestling uh, time was the the Attitude Era. Obviously, when mm. you know it really sort of picked up a bit. Awesome, awesome. Were you into any other sports other than wrestling when you were growing up? I just asked this because you're in the UK, as I am as well, and quite common for us, obviously, with PE and sports base very yeah. like yeah you know, get taught at a very young age so i just want to ask if yeah. you were into anything else as well uh when i was at school i tried I, I tried to be um i tried to do a bit of everything um i used to do dance i was a very good well not being big headed but i was a very good dancer um in the in the school that in the secondary school that i was in i, I won dancer of the year so out of the whole school i, I won best dancer um probably not so much now um i've grown a bit of a, a dad bod and stuff so Probably can't. Pretty uh, versatile, man. <laughs> well, I can't do the moves that I, I used to do. Um, but yeah, I was in the hockey team. We, we played hockey and then uh, I was in the basketball team um, and then football team as well. I tried the rugby team, but I didn't really like rugby uh, as much. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to try and do a bit of everything, really. But wrestling was like your main passion, would you say, growing up? As yeah. You didn't talk- yeah. When was it that you knew that you wanted to become a professional wrestler? Um. I always, when, when you're a wrestling fan, you always have dreams of being a wrestler and wanting yeah. to do it. Um, and at the time when when I was growing up, it, it wasn't something that was, there wasn't too many wrestling schools like there are now uh, around. Um, so I never really thought I would be a wrestler, but it was always like one of those dreams, like, you know, ha- having that dream of, of wrestling someone like Stone Cold and, uh, and all that. But at the time, like I say, when I was, you know, 15, 16, 17, when I was proper into my wrestling and um, there wasn't like too much around. I know there was um, FWA down in Portsmouth where I, where I lived. Um, yeah. But at the time I had a, a full-time job, so I couldn't really commit to the training that they were offering. And um, and then I found a school uh, down in Portsmouth called Halen Island Wrestling. Uh, and I thought, you know what, I'm just going to gonna go for it. Um, the first session, um, I was like, I didn't like. I, th- I think as a fan, um, although we appreciate wrestling and we appreciate the wrestlers, I don't think you fully appreciate what goes into it until yeah. you do it. Um, so yeah. So after the first session, I was like, Phew. you know, like it, it, it takes it out of you, and you don't realize how much like you know, even just running the ropes hurts. You know, you would think that they were they were spongy and soft and stuff. So I, th- I think that gave me uh, a deeper appreciation. 
uh, of wrestlers and, and professional wrestling. And then uh, I think, and ask any wrestler this, I'm sure they'll say the same, is that, you know, once you get into wrestling, it's very hard to try and get out. Even if you want to retire, you've always, there's, there's always that mm. something there. So I, I mean, like Ric Flair's just like not stopping, moved, is he? Moved areas. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, he's probably still going to be going in his coffin. Um, so, yeah, so it was, uh, so I, I stopped doing it for, for a little bit uh, because work became a bit busier and I got promotions and stuff. So I didn't really have the time until I, I moved up to um, to Chesh. Um, and then it was, I, I kind of like sort of forgot about wrestling, uh, you know, doing the training and stuff, but it was still a passion of mine. And then one day I saw um work for a school and I was like, fuck it you know let's, let's, let's go for it let's try it again let's um, resume it then, yeah and then uh, yeah the rest is uh, history I want to ask about the disciple because I know that's you know I kind of feel that's you you know that's who I'm talking to at the mm -hmm. moment the disciple for the listeners that might not be aware of who you are or who your character is could you explain to them like the meaning and like why you are called the disciple essentially like you know the background of the disciple yeah, so essentially, I was um, I was trying to think of, of, of different characters, and I was doing a bit of brainstorming. And I think at the start, uh, I originally um, I didn't want anyone to see my face because it was kind of more of a, like a confidence thing. So I was going to wear a mask, um, and I was I always wanted I knew I always wanted to be a heel. I wanted to be a you know a bad guy. So I was thinking of sort of um, sort of like powerful names. Um, and originally I was thinking of like the dark disciple um but then it didn't really doesn't really sort of you know have a a good ring to it now I know there's obviously disciple in WCW when it was uh, it was, it was BK, BK. one yeah. of his many um, many names yeah <laughs> yeah but uh so he was called the disciple uh, mm -hmm. and the only difference is that I'm just called disciple not the disciple so slightly different um and I think I think what I based the character around is that he was going to be the disciple of professional wrestling you know he's gonna there was the whole point of of wrestling is to take it seriously and it's a competition and you want to win and you know there, there'll be competitors or all wrestlers out there that are you know taking a mick out of it and doing silly spots and this that and the other and the whole point of the disciple character is to you know it's professional wrestling you take it seriously this is how you do it um and i, th I think that was just really and i think like i said that the idea was always to be a heel. Um, I was heel for a couple of years, and then on one show, I was told that I was going to be uh, a face on the, the day, uh, just 10 minutes before a match. Mm -hmm. um, so I had to switch that up, which was uh, quite quite good. It was, it was challenging for me, but it was, it was good to sort of put me on the spot, and it gave me uh, a good bit of uh, experience and stuff. But... Yeah, I think it's easier to to be a, a bad guy in in wrestling, and like I say, I enjoy being a bad guy, and I enjoy being a dick. <laughs> Fair enough, man. It's, I think it's easier to be a dick than to be a nice person. Yeah, it's just in general. Um, I want to go back to what really? you mentioned, Lance uh, Lance Vera. Uh, he's a good lad, I'm joking. Um, very cocky, but he is who he is. Yeah. But I want to ask. Also, shame he sports Man United, but had to squeeze that in there because I know he's going to listen to this. Yeah. But I want to ask you, what was your first impression of him? Um, so we we started training together. We we started training together at the same school, mm -hmm. um, and he, he, as a person, he was sort of quite um, quiet at the time, and he had a, he was a bit reserved and a bit shy. Um, but when he went into the ring, he like his confidence would grow in the ring. Yeah, uh, and I think it's purely because he wanted to to do well, and he. You know, wanted to improve him. He wants to be a you know professional wrestler and be a very very successful one. Um, and then obviously, yeah, with the with the the character that comes with it, it comes a certain swagger. So obviously, with uh, with the years uh, passing by as they do, obviously you, you pick up that confidence. And you know, the more bookings you get, and the, you know, the, the more matches you have and stuff, um, comes that confidence. Um, so yeah, so we're, we're actually, uh, we're traveling to a, a show tomorrow. We're doing a carnival show together tomorrow. Um, so yeah, so that'll be, that'll be fun. Nah, get, nah, get on you. I know you're quite close as well. So I just had to ask you about yeah. it. Um, I want to ask about signature move that you have. Uh, Salvation Spine Buster. I think yeah. Spine Buster is one of the best moves in wrestling history. Arn Anderson perfected it, you know, Triple H and 
might be yeah. rude, but I want to ask why is it that you've sort of adopted it into your own move? Um, I, I think with signatures, finishers, um, I think you need to do a move that is, or, or I suppose for a, for a bigger guy like myself, you need to have mm -hmm. a move that looks quite powerful and you know quite damaging when you, you hit it on an opponent. So, um, I, I've always been a fan of like the older sort of style of wrestling, um, and then obviously Arn Anderson, you know, big big fan of his work and stuff. So um, I always, uh, anytime I saw the Spinebuster or, or when I saw him do the Spinebuster and Triple H do the Spinebuster, they make it look so good and it is so devastating when they do it. So mm. I wanted to do it, to adopt that because obviously there's there's loads and loads of ways of doing the Spinebuster. Obviously there's just the standing one, there's the spin round one, there's the you know all, all different kinds. So. I wanted to adopt that sort of style of, of spine buster and because it does look, you know, more powerful uh, when you do it on an opponent. I did like it when you did it like just multiple times, like straight, like continuously. Uh, you must yeah. have felt sick after doing that. <laughs> yeah, I think I think it was uh, I think it was nine in a row, uh, something like that, nine in a row. And then a couple of them were, you know, were, were shoot lifts, like you know, they, they weren't like they weren't the the other guys weren't jumping and it was shoot. You know, picking them up and throwing them down, and obviously the last one was against a, a guy called Rampage Ramsey, a uh, big guy. And um, yeah, I think at the end of that, I was ready to do a, take a breather. <laughs> done, done. Um, I've got to ask you because I, I hear, I think you've said it yourself that you're a big Superman fan. I think you got a tattoo of it. Mm. So I yeah. did it with Joel Jackson, and I got him to rank the Batman films. I want you to rank the Superman films: the first original four, Superman Returns, and the Justice League films as well, and Batman vs Superman. If you can rank those films, you don't necessarily have to go too much detail, but if you can rank them from worst to best. I'd probably put you on the spot at the moment, but I think it's a fun question. Yeah, um, I think just because of um, originality for the time, uh, Superman, uh, the movie, 1978, Richard Donner, mm -hmm. that was, uh, at, it was leaps and bounds above, you know, uh, its time. And, and that's obviously a classic, you know, Christopher Reeve is a, is a brilliant Superman. Um, so that'd be my, uh, my top one. Um, then I would go for, um, now if we were talking Justice League, I, I don't want to talk about Joss Whedon's Justice League. I'm only talking about Zack Snyder's Justice League. That's Because to me that is, that is the real Justice League in my eyes. And that was, um, I was so excited when that was announced that that was uh, coming out. I was absolutely buzzing for it. So um, yeah, that'd be my second one. Um, Man of Steel, third. Um, some people really hate that. I really liked it. I, I did think it went a bit on too much near the end, but I did think it was a good film. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't really get the hate from it because obviously people were saying that you know, oh, they they destroyed a lot of buildings in New York and or, or in Metropolis and stuff, and then like, well, look at Avengers. Mm. Well, it's the same kind of thing, really. Um, so. Um, Justice League second then I would say Man of Steel um, <coughs> then I would say Batman versus Superman Ultimate Edition I'll get a lot of hate for this because everyone a lot of people say oh yeah Batman versus Superman shit this that never but you watch the Ultimate Edition and it's just, it's surprising how those extra I think it's what 10, 15, 20 minutes yeah. make it a, a much much better film um, then I would go Superman. You are going to get hate for that, Superman. by the way, still. <laughs> I, I, will. I will. I know I will. I, I'm prepared to take it. I'm prepared to take it. Uh, and then, uh, obviously, yeah, Superman 3 and 4, obviously, The Quest for Peace was uh, an absolute disaster uh, of a film. Um, I think they were just trying to trying to get money from it. But, um, but yeah. Um, what about Superman Returns? Oh, shit, yeah, Superman Returns. Do you know what? That was another one I, I enjoyed at the time. But, again, everyone sort of... They, they complained mm. that it was more of a love 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 film than obviously it was about his relationship with, with Lois and stuff. But um, I would actually put that in. Actually, sorry, I would put that in um, after Batman versus Superman. Yeah, that's fair. I really liked it when I saw it cinema, but then I rewatched it a couple of years ago. I was like, it's not really that good. Like, it's not I think I think they could have. Yeah, I think they could have done more with it. But I think yeah. actually, but I think that you know, as uh, Superman had didn't have a, a live action film mm. for you know over twenty years at the time, so. Um, but the CGI yeah, was awesome. Like, he was, I thought he was a good suit, man. I forgot the guy's name. Yeah. Though. Brandon something. Brandon Ralph, yeah. That's the one. But no, that's cool. I've never ranked Superman films before. I've done Batman, but now I've done Superman. So yeah, that's that's awesome. That's I had to ask, man. Um, no, that's that's awesome. Just um, as I'm sort of wrapping up, I want to ask you what have been some of your favourite promotions 
that you've worked for or in some of your favourite towns also in the UK? Um, I wrestled uh, for a couple of promotions down south, obviously, you know, where I'm from down south uh, originally. So I wrestled in, in Camberley mm-hmm. for, for Tap Out Wrestling. Um, and I, I wrestled with uh, a couple of guys that I trained with years and years and years prior when I was at Halen Island Wrestling. So that was my sort of turnabout uh, in, uh, obviously, our, our lives where, you know, 15 years down the line, we sort of meet each other again and, and wrestle on the same show, which is pretty cool. Um, do a lot of stuff, obviously, in, in Yorkshire. There's a, a company that's sort of just sort of building up at the minute called uh, Non-Stop Action Wrestling. Uh, fairly new company. Um, I've done a couple of shows for them, and then I'm, I'm sort of helping with the training as well. Uh, and that's one thing I enjoy doing. I enjoy sort of training uh, people into wrestling, training them and showing them the right way and stuff and passing on my mm. uh, my knowledge, even though I've not been doing it like, you know, nine years, nine or ten years or so. But, um, but it's, you know, I like passing on that knowledge and sort of helping people develop and, uh, and move on. If you had to, I actually want to just follow up on that. If you had to give someone that's listening to this podcast, they want to get into wrestling. If you just had to give them quick advice something that stood up to you that's been given to you maybe uh, just mm-hmm. a bit like some just generous advice that you can provide to them about getting into the wrestling business um it would be get around to, to different schools uh, learn different styles um the one way is is never the right way there's there's loads of different ways to to do different things um just take notes, take lots and lots of notes. I always take a pen and, and uh, pad with me anytime I do training or whatever. Um, and I always encourage the the trainees to, you know, take a pen and uh, pad down and try and practice even if you're at home, whether it be promos, punching, whatever it might be. Um, and then you just can't stop learning, really. Just, you know, just keep learning. There's always, always stuff to learn in wrestling. And there's, like I say, there's loads of different ways to to do things. So just, just keep learning, keep watching. Awesome, man. That's some good advice. Uh, well, last question. It's a fun question. Every answer is different for this one. Okay. So it doesn't have to be wrestling related. It can be anything. So you get to have your own dream dinner party. You get to pick three guests, dead, alive, historical, wrestling, Superman, but any, anyone, anything, anything you can think of. You are the host. You've got to remember, you've got to be chewing your ear off. You know, you want to pick their brains apart. It's your yep. meal. You pick three. If you can give a reason also to them, that would be great. But entirely up to you, mate. You are the host. Um, I would say Chris Reeve, um, because he was uh, one of the first Superman, obviously that I, that I watched, and one of the reasons I sort of fell in love with it. So I'd love to to, to speak to uh, to him. Um, my other one would be Stone Cold Steve Austin. Um, <laughs> after uh, after uh, obviously Hulk Hogan through the Attitude Era, he was like my number one guy that I would just absolutely obsess over. Uh, I was lucky enough to go to uh, WrestleMania twenty five be inducted uh, into the Hall of Fame, which was pretty cool. Um, so yeah, Wait, so you got to, to see Shawn Michaels and Taker? I did. I was there live. Oh, actually, yeah. man. Jealous. That was absolutely incredible, yeah. Watching it live was just, uh, yeah, it was so good. Man, um, and then my third one, it would probably be, I'm, I'm, I'm a massive uh, Lord of the Rings uh, fan, so it probably would actually be Tolkien. Um, I think the man is just an absolute genius, how he mm. created, like, languages and you know the characters that he come up with and stuff and um yeah i'd love to love to have a, a conversation with him so that so you doing that film must have been like just even a better experience because you are a genuine fan that must have been yeah. awesome then do you know when it came up i was like i've absolutely got to do this you know i made sure that i booked time off work so mm. i was definitely going to do it I, di- I didn't want to miss that opportunity and j- to say that i was in that film you know uh, based on his life because uh, like i said i'm a, a massive massive lord of the rings fan and um, so yeah, so it was re- something I really, really wanted to do when the opportunity came, and I, I made sure that I, I, I'd done it and I didn't miss out on it. I do like the films, but I don't love them. Like, I mean, for Star Wars, I can have a, I can have four pound conversation, but Lord of Rings, not so much. But I get why oh. people love it, though. They are they are good films, but just, I don't know. You have to like really appreciate them to want to watch them over and over, and then the Hobbits. And, and as that's well. what I do. Yeah, I mean, not so much the Hobbits. I think. Um, I'm, I'm not a big fan of the hobbits i think that's too cgi and mm. i think i think when you you look back at lord of the rings now from obviously when they they came out uh you know over 20 years ago like especially fellowship of the ring a lot of that was you know like prosthetics and you know mm. very little cgi and that i think it, that stands to test the time and you know I, I think the first one's like it's really well that one i really like yeah. I saw that cinema as well my brother 
Yeah, yeah, that, that's that's one of my, my favorite one out of the three. To be fair, that is a is a great one. Um, <laughs> Never had that before. Fire alarm. <laughs> that's in the fire alarm. So sorry. That's cool, man. Um, that's cool. We're, we're near the end. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But no, that's that's right. awesome. That's that's absolutely fine, man. Um, last question then. I think I, I think we've had a good conversation. It's not all be, not all been about wrestling, which is quite nice. You know, sometimes I think sometimes it can be a bit, you know, yeah. Just get your mind off it. But what have you got lined up? Is there anything you want to promote? Anything you want to plug or share? The opportunity is yours, mate. Uh, yeah. Well, I've got uh, got a show on uh, Saturday tomorrow with, with Lance up in Blackburn. Mm -hmm. uh, and then um, I've got a few things lined up, so just keep an eye on my social media on Facebook uh, and Instagram. I'm going to be um, putting out a, a YouTube channel very soon with some matches on there and some highlights. And then um, very, very soon, I'm going to be dropping some new merch as well. Uh, so keep awesome. a lookout for that. Awesome. And if the fans want to stay up to date with you, where can they find you on Facebook and Instagram? On Facebook, it's at Disciple Wrestling. And on Instagram, it's at Disciple Wrestler. Awesome, man. Awesome. Thank you for coming on. No uh, worries, we actually you. got raised just not too long ago, but thank you for making yourself available. And no the worries. 100th episode as well. It's been a blast. Uh, I'm going to let everyone know now. I will be continuing the podcast for now. Uh, my time might be a bit limited because I do have to go back to the office uh, next month, but I will be continuing. So just everyone be happy with that. But everyone, if you can like, subscribe, share, do what you can to support this channel so it can continue to grow and I can produce more awesome content on a regular basis. Let's do it. But for now, everyone, have a good weekend. Take care. Hello there. Yeah. I've got a special announcement for my next guest. And this is definitely not an outtake. Hello, I am Regina Rosendahl, and I will be on What You Call It podcast. Yeah, heard. <laughs> <laughs>